Today I'm going to be discussing using tennis balls for massage purposes. Now in some of my previous articles I've talked about how some people will claim tennis balls can get you myofascial release. I don't think they can. Um, I'd say they give you myofascial relief, but because of a couple different factors, they don't all the way get the myofascial release that, um, that is necessary. If you'd like more information about that, you can read my article at www.custompilatesandyoga.com. Just look up myofascial release. But these tennis balls, even though they don't give myofascial release, they do a really great job massaging. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways. Now, this video is not going to be particularly one that you will want to go along with me and keep up at my pace. I'm going to be rather brief so that we can get through all the points because one of the great things about tennis balls is as you're moving along, whenever you find an area that's tight, you want to stay longer, you want to try to get that muscle to release, you can absolutely take your time. Sometimes when I feel really junky, I can very easily be on these tennis balls for half an hour. However, the next time I go to do the tennis balls, I won't need to be on there for quite as long because my body will have loosened up considerably. So in order to give respect to people who may not be quite as tight, um, we're going to sort of move through this quickly. So let's begin. Let's start on our backs. And if you're going to do tennis ball rolling, on a mat or on your carpet, I guess, wherever, you want to make sure you have a lot of space behind you, okay? So when I go to lie down, I'm going to go to the end of my mat here, and now I've got plenty of space behind me so that as I move, the tennis balls will roll down along my spine. And that's what we're going to begin with. We're going to begin with the spine. So to place the tennis balls, I like to do two tennis balls for the spine. I don't ever do single. You rock to one side, get that ball placed, and now the trick is you're going to try to get the other tennis ball lined up at approximately the same spot. Now you want to be, oh, just a little bit away from the spine. I try to place the tennis ball in between the edge of my scapula and my spine. So if this is my spine and here's my scapula, there's sort of this little sweet spot in there and I want that tennis ball to move up and down that line as we travel through the spine. So that's what I look for. Some people too, when they do their tennis balls for their spine, they'll put them in a tube sock and then they'll use like a rubber band on the end to help keep them in. This helps keep the tennis balls really firmly in one place as you move, you really lose that possibility of shooting one off to the side, but I guess I live dangerously. Okay, so you'll lower on down. Now, in this position, um, some people are gonna start up higher. I always like to place the tennis balls by my shoulder blades and then scoot down and see if I can get the neck muscles, which are uh, the upper trapezius muscles. And that won't feel as particularly effective as if we were doing um, a wall massage where we could really turn and rotate into it. However, it is good just to start there as a warm up. Now, when you're going to move, your arms are straight by your sides, your heels are in line with your sits bones, you're going to press into your hands, press into your feet, pick your hips up a little bit, push, and lower down. Now, if you have longer hair or, you know, just to the shoulder length hair, you want to really watch out because as you move, you might get your hair stuck in the tennis balls, okay? So be aware of that. And as you move on, you want to stay in a place until the muscle relaxes. All right, so you start off, and for me, when I think about it, my tight muscle kind of feels like a piece of plywood sitting on top of that tennis ball, okay? And as I breathe, as I relax, as that muscle relaxes, it sort of drapes and melts around that tennis ball and really softens and gives. And then when I feel that, then I know it's time to move on to the next spot. Another thing to think about 
is if you roll onto a spot and it hurts, 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 and you're breathing and you're trying to relax and it's not relaxing, just move off that spot, okay? Sometimes when we go to roll, there's a really nasty place. And if it feels nasty, if you feel like you're tensing instead of releasing, just acknowledge and move on. Just get past that. Um, if it's very bad, don't even roll through. Use your hands to move the balls to the next spot. Now, next thing I want you to think about is consider your tight spots anywhere in your body to be like targets, okay? Lots of times we talk about knots in our neck or back or shoulders. So imagine those knots are the bullseye of your target. That area all around it is also going to be tight. And they're sort of, just like in a target, in these layers, these rings that are bigger and bigger. And so if you're on a spot that hurts, let's say I roll onto this spot and it hurts, instead of going right for the center of the spot, instead of aiming right for the bullseye, you guys, you want to work the outside area. So you might try to play with it and come up from the top and get set up like right around here and maybe try to roll out in this area here and get at it from a different direction because if you can get the muscles up top to release, this knot is going to release and release so that when you do finally come around to it, it won't be that bad. Now, I'm set up at a place right now where the tennis balls are right near my shoulder blades. This, this can be fun. This can also be a big challenge, okay? So if you have tightness in your upper back, if you have tightness in your shoulders, anywhere in that upper part of, back, of the back down to the lower shoulder blade, this is going to be applicable. You can bring your arms up toward the ceiling and start doing some of the Pilates arm exercises, right? So if you've seen my other videos, if you've seen rib cage placement, you know what I'm talking about. We've got the rib cage connected to the hips. We can reach the arms and come on up. We can also do a scissors where one goes back and one comes up. You can also do scapular protraction and retraction. So the arms lift with the shoulder blades separating. You come back to neutral and then you let the shoulder blades slide toward each other and come back to neutral. This really, really digs into those muscles, okay? You can also let your arms be by your sides and do neck stretches. You can bring your right ear toward your right shoulder, keeping your face up toward the ceiling, and then you'd switch directions. You'd go left ear toward the left shoulder. And you can also turn to face the right. You can turn to face the left. Now, when I'm doing the neck stretches, I start higher up. And at my very first spot that I'm at, I'll do my neck stretches. And then when I move the tennis balls onto the next spot, I'll do my neck stretches. And you wanna keep working at that really the whole way down. Now, what's gonna happen as you roll, and I'm gonna just move on for the sake of time. As you roll, you're gonna come upon your lumbar curve here. Okay? When you're in your lumbar curve, the pressure of the tennis balls is not going to be quite as significant. So if it is just absolutely killing you to have your tennis balls in your mid-back, you don't have to do that. Roll past that spot or use your hands to move it on down. You do want to start, um, let's see, right now I'm at like my second to bottom rib. And that feels challenging, but not debilitating. And so you want to keep going with this. Now you'll notice the whole time that I've been talking, I've been rolling and moving. I haven't been using my hands to place the tennis ball past the initial time. This is because as we move, that ball can really roll along the muscles 
and get some good stretch going on. But if you stop, if you use your hands to move the ball, you don't really know where that ball's going to end up. Is it going to be on the exact same muscle? I don't know, maybe. But you're going to have this spot that got missed because you didn't roll. Okay, so always, whenever possible, roll. And when you're going from your bottom rib on down to the top of your hips, that is where the psoas muscle is and where lots of low back pain stems from. So even though the pressure isn't quite as significant in the low back as it is up with the upper back, this is still really important because these muscles down here really need attention. Okay, now I'm going to get up and move down to the end of my mat again to make sure you guys can still keep watching me. And I'm going to start with my tennis balls back on my psoas. Now, I keep going and I'm rolling through my psoas. Now, I've reached the top of my pelvis. Okay, for some people you might think this is where we stop. No, this is not where we stop. You're going to keep going and I want you to let the tennis balls come um, to different points in your pelvis. So like right now I have rolled just past my um, back edge of my pelvis so I've moved just past the bone and that is a very tender connective point so that's a good area to get and now I'm going to keep moving on and when you get to different spots just let yourself relax but the reason that we're rolling the reason that we keep everything set up the way we do is so that when we get to this situation with the glutes especially where we've got so many muscles running in different directions. If we can stay running in those parallel lines, we can target approximately the same spots of approximately the same muscles at the same time. Now, also when I'm in here with the glutes, I like to play and do different spots. So this is when I would recommend you plant your feet lift your hips up, take the tennis balls, and you can take them way out to the sides here to get different parts of your glute. You can bring them in very uh, close on either side of the tailbone. That feels very good too. But um, you can play around with it. Just make sure, get the ball at comparable places for both sides. All right, so now we're rolling on, and as we keep going, the tennis balls come down. You can really feel them roll, and they'll come just past your sits bones and straighten your legs. Now, nice straight legs, feet are flexed, heels are pressing into the mat. Use your hands to come on up. Now we're into hamstrings, okay? So we've just done all of our spinal muscles. We've gone on through our glutes, now we're going to get our hamstrings. And so for this, if you can sit up tall, absolutely sit up tall. If you can't, if you end up with your pelvis tucking under you, just turn, get by a wall. If you can't sit up straight, um, use a wall to help you feel comfortable. Because what's really important, right, your number one goal with doing this is to get tight muscles to relax. And so if your body is freaking out, trying to keep you upright, you're not gonna be able to relax. So just find a wall. But if you are not near a wall, you can use your hands to help you scoot on, and it does help you trap along the hamstrings. Now, I would tell people, get your legs a little bit closer in, so for that, I'm going to move my tennis balls a little bit to get set how I want. We want the legs together because by and large when people are standing, their legs are really wide, okay? Um, you don't, unless you're pregnant, you don't really need that kind of base of support. You need to have your feet under your sits bones. So by bringing your legs in, we're kind of getting a benefit of stretching the outsides of the legs or the IT bands while we're doing this. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, never, ever, ever roll the back of your knee. The back of your knee has muscles that crisscross 
don't mess with that. So as you're rolling, you always want to stop right above the knee. Okay, and I'll use the tennis balls and move them down to show you. So right here above the knee. And now the next step is we move on down to the calves. And likewise, I skip that same amount of space. Um, you can feel where your calves start to get bulk. That's where I place my tennis balls. Now, in this, um, we, we're on the gastrocnemius. We're on the soleus. Okay, so we've got the tennis ball there to work those muscles. If you let your heels lift and kind of do a nonchalant flopping, I guess. Um, I do a nonchalant point and flex. The nonchalance helps to activate the soleus, which lays beneath the gastrocnemius. So we're rolling here, and technically we're rolling the gastrocnemius because that is the most superficial of the muscles. The soleus is beneath it. But when we do this sort of floppy point flex, we activate the soleus. Now, it is a very common theory that the soleus actually works almost like a second heart for the body in terms of circulation and the health that you have when you have good circulation. So I like to have people do this, especially if you are someone who tends to swell in your legs. If you have a job where you're sitting a lot, if you travel a lot, do this sort of nice nonchalant point and flex, and this will help um, circulate through your legs. Now, as we go on down, again, you can use your hands to push. I'm not going to so that I can stay in frame here. Um, you want to have the ball travel all the way down your leg. And in fact, I normally have it go right on down to the Achilles tendon. You want to get it as low as you can so that you can get the most benefit here and finish that string. It's a little trickier to do that point and flex on there. It's a little trickier to keep your legs up on the balls, but it doesn't have to be perfect, just give it a try. All right, and then when you're done, you can release. Now, in terms of single ball work, you can roll your feet. You can be seated in like a chair or you can be standing and have the ball on the floor to apply pressure. You want to make sure to get all areas of your feet. So up in the toes, right in this area right here along the top of the ball of the foot, right in the ball of the foot, on down the arch, the outside, and the heel. And you want to take a moment, dig into the heel, especially if you're somebody who tends to have flare-ups with the plantar fascia. Um, you tend to get plantar fasciitis or pain along the back of your calf or sole of your foot. Um, just dig in a little bit at the back of your heel and see if you can get that loosened up a little bit. And another thing you can do with a single tennis ball is you can go next to a wall. You can place the tennis ball on your chest and you want to get this sort of fleshy pit right here near your armpit and you want to roll on up. You want to get right below the clavicle, which is your collarbone. Roll on over toward your sternum, which is your breastbone. Now, I don't think you want to roll on your sternum. I think that would be painful, but you'll do this standing against a wall and it sort of looks like you're making out with the wall. If you would like more information, please visit my website, www.custompilatesandyoga.com. And to stay informed on what I've got coming up, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.